What's happening, y'all? This is Big L here in Wentzville, Missouri. It's uh, 81 degrees and beautiful today. So I'm out rolling around a little bit. I got a couple of errands to run. I'm about to go back home and play with the kitties and uh, get them outside, run around a little bit. Because I know we've all gained about five pounds since you know, we've been out. But um, check this out. Today, um, I'm going to give you a quick review of uh, Newcastle School of Trades. Um, I went to Newcastle School of Trades, a 17 month program for automotive. And I was really blessed uh, since we got forced out here to Wentzville, Missouri through our job. Um, I was really blessed that the week before we had to come out here, I graduated from Newcastle School of Trades. So it was really a blessing and it was perfect timing. But I felt back in 2017 that um, out there in Lordstown, Ohio, our, um, our factory, it just seemed to be too much like it was at the end in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. So I went on and enrolled in school, got in the program. Like I said, it was perfect time. If I waited any later, I would have had to drop out when we moved. So that's a blessing in itself. So, But Newcastle School of Trades, as a young black man, it's it can be difficult getting in certain, um, certain trades or doing certain things. And the reason is there's not a lot of us going through those programs, especially at once, we seem to kind of trickle in, and especially depending on what program it is, um, you won't find a lot of black people in the program, so you really don't have a lot of support, like supporting each other, and some people say, well, that doesn't matter, but it does matter, and it matters a lot, and um, those, that, uh, those that say it don't matter aren't black, so that's kind of funny, but... For me, I noticed um, I ended up being the only one for that uh, period of time in that program. And actually, uh, there was a couple of black guys on days. I ended up on the second, second or nights, and um, a couple of those even dropped out. And where it was just like it was few and far between. And you'll find out that a lot of times uh, an instructor will find someone that is their uh, their favorite and you'll notice and I noticed it big time in that program that um, the favorite they seem to get away with a lot and do a lot and then if it's going to be that way at all or in these programs it should be equal as far as time because you don't have a lot of time per day um, even if you have questions sometimes you don't have a lot of time to get your question answered or to always thoroughly go through what you need to go through and the program itself out there at Newcastle School of Trades was, was a good program but one thing that I did not like was after you get out of the program you still have to work a year in the field in order to get your ASC certifications and I, I get that I understand that but at the same time when you spend $20,000 or more for a program and then come out of it as an entry level person, you could have done this exact same thing without spending the money and got the job entry level. And some of these uh, car lots, some of these businesses will actually put you through programs to uh, get you your ASC certification and you'll learn as you go on. Now the advantage of going to school is you do have some knowledge coming out of school that you, you can really kind of move up where you are a little bit quicker if you do when you do get a job and you know your ASC certification means a lot because that's really dictates how much you get paid in the long run but in this program um, as a young black man there are certain things that you will have to get over and um, one of those things is language um, there's a lot of shop talk I don't know if I've heard that before. You know, everybody heard that. We talked about that with uh, with uh, Trump. You know how he talked. You know, because when the boys get together, it's just as bad as when the girls get together and they're alone. The, the language is not always the greatest. But there's a lot of racial undertones sometimes when you're dealing with that. Being that there's not a black, not a lot of black people in those programs. And um, for instance, I had one instance where. Um, Sometimes people get a little too, little too close, a little too comfortable, should I say? And they start saying, saying things, and 
the conversation normally ends up, you know I'm not racist, and you know what I'm saying, so there's no way you think I'm racist, blah, 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 and then later you hear them say something that's not really quite right, you know, like some people use the word colored instead of black, and uh, yes, I've heard a couple black people use it, but normally it's black people from the south or older black folks, you don't hear a lot of younger black people, even younger than 60, use the word colored. And I've heard that plenty of times in this program. I've heard it before, but you know, it's something that doesn't necessarily bother me. Um, like I'm going to go tell you off, but if it's used in a manner of, just like any other racial expression, if it's used in a manner of uh, as an attack, then yeah, I'm going to I'm going to call you on it. But not only the word "color," but one instance um, towards the end of the day in the class. Um, we were all in the uh, instructor's office, everybody talking, you know, kind of, kind of, you know, shooting the breeze a little bit before we go, so we were pretty much done for the day. And the uh, conversation went, the, the instructor was uh, talking about his, his boss, you know, and um, his boss, nobody liked this guy, and he was the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the department, department head. And the department head, he was also an instructor, but he really didn't know a lot. Um, not when it came to, you know, the, the class. I mean, he had his own drag racer, dragsters and all that. So stuff that he worked on. He probably had other people working on it too, but didn't really have a lot of knowledge when you asked him certain things. And he would tell you the wrong things sometimes too. But push come to shove, the instructor was talking about him, talking about his boss. And he used the phrase, um, as you know, his boss was what, bossing him around, telling him to do this and that, blah, 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 like they weren't grown men. But his expression was, well, he was treating us like he was one of his niggers, you know, like a slave or something. And me being the only black guy in the room, and every single other kid looked at me, waiting for me to go plumb crazy. But I let it go, because I knew that he wasn't using that as an attack. And there are some older people that they use certain language and they are so comfortable being around their friends that it's not necessarily them being racist, but it's still words and phrases that shouldn't be said. So I understand, I'm an older guy, I understand that. And so the puzzle is towards the end of me, you know, getting out of there anyway. Um, to graduate, so I wasn't really gonna go plumb nuts over nothing like that. I kind of I let that just let it go. Didn't make me happy, but you know at the same time, it's not gonna be something I'm gonna flip off on and then you know end up getting kicked out of school or blah 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 or raise issues. So like I said, this is one of those things. Being a younger black guy, you have to be you have to have a tough skin in certain situations, and um, that's definitely one of them. Other than that, I kind of got frustrated with the school and uh, because we had a couple of situations with my job that they cut a shift. So, but they did school did work with me and let me switch shifts in school. But both school both uh, shifts started uh, their quarters at a different time. Like one was two weeks after the other. So that means I was either two weeks ahead or two weeks behind. So. Like I said, they worked with me, but it ended up making me uh, six weeks behind. So I actually graduated six weeks after the people I started with on nights. And um, so I mean, that didn't really you know, bother me too much. But yet and still, when that did happen and we ended up changing, um, they told me they couldn't work with me to keep me on schedule because it would put me too far behind the other class that already started two weeks ago. Well, at the time, we were on a three week break. So, and the instructors had to still come to school. So my thing was, you could have worked with me because it would have been one-on-one -on -one time with me and the instructor. And I could have gotten you know, some things done. We could have got a better understanding and really been you know, better off. But the department head, he was upset because we didn't go through him. We went over his head. So me and my instructor talked to the, the big boss of the school and got it all arranged. But I don't think the department had appreciated that too much. 
so he kind of put the, the stiff on that so it is what it is but the other issue i have is a favoritism issue and you've seen videos hopefully you've seen some of the videos of me talking about this uh gmc acadia where i took this gmc acadia to that school at the at the beginning when we had all these issues and i was hoping that you know we could go through it and, and fix it all there at school well what ended up happening was we talk about favoritism there was a with the department head like i said he was an instructor also on days and um, there was a particular student there i guess he took a liking to him, and he brought this piece of junk truck up there to work on and that truck ended up being up there for almost three months in the way in a bay in the way and the kid didn't really do his own thing with the school like he was supposed to. He was always messing with this truck. So after they finally, and, and that ended up being a bad situation, police ended up getting called with, on that for that guy with that truck and everything else, and that ended up being a stupid, like real dumb situation. But the thing that got me was when I finally was able to bring my the Acadia in, uh, we needed to change out the uh, transmission. So that's a that's a big job. And I was on days kind of by myself, you know, because since uh, it was in between with the, with the class schedules and everything else, um, I ended up one-on-one -on -one with the instructor on the, on the uh, HVAC part of the, uh, of the course. So I was kind of working by myself to get through and keep up versus uh, then after that, I ended up with the, you know, with the class again and we worked like that. So, until the end of the, end of the uh, quarter, you know. But, um, got this truck in, this uh, GMC Acadia in. On Thursday, we started working on it, and pretty much I was by myself. But the department head instructor was asking, well, how come it's not out yet? I was like, dude, I've never done this before. I need help, you know. But every time I ask a question, this guy runs away. And, you know, so it ended up being an ordeal. Um, I did a lot of work on my own, and then the night class, they did work on it also. So they actually helped me, you know, get the whole cradle uh, that holds the engine transmission all down. Um, we got it apart. I took the, the transmission off with, you know, a couple of guys on days. Then, um, so that's the truck sitting there in a bay on a lift on Thursday and Friday. Friday, this guy is bugging because it's not done yet. I'm like, we're students, we're doing a transmission job. It's a pretty big job for people who don't know what they're doing at all whatsoever that's trying to figure it out and you're not helping. Then Monday, I actually got to try, I took the transmission, I had to uh, exchange it, so I took it to uh, Columbus. Um, there was a place out there for my job that uh, you got the transmissions for a, a decent price. So I had to swap them out came back Tuesday and we started to put it on, you know, you could get everything on. And this guy's bugging, rushing, we need to use this bay, blah, 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 blah. It's like, we got four lifts, this is one lift. And I'm, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, this other guy's had this vehicle here for three months. And you're, and he, this is a piece of junk vehicle that we're talking about. And we're trying to do a big job with a brand new transmission on this Acadia. This is a nice car. And you know, you're trying to rush this job because it's guy because it's not your favorite student, it's just somebody else. And I kind of took that as a kind of a racial thing too, but like I said, I kind of let that go. Because you know, you it's like you're treating my thing like it's a piece of junk, but you're treating this late 70s, early 80s rust bucket that this guy's working on like it's gold. So that kind of you know that that irked me. You know, that, that that really irked me, and it still irks me now. And it irks me now because, uh, like I said, Knights helped out too. And they rushed to put this thing back together and we still have an issue. Me personally, if um, if this job had been done right and we could have took time on it instead of being rushed and this guy didn't really know what he was doing himself, the night instructors is the, are the ones that really helped out, you know, on, on getting it done and getting it, you know, trying to get it done right. We still got students doing it. Uh, my issue or frustration is I couldn't be there to oversee everything going on with the vehicle. 
so don't know what's done right and what's not done right. You know what I mean? Something it's not obviously it's not right. For like I said, that was 2000, early 2018 dealing with this, and we're still talking this 2020, and I'm still dealing with issues the same exact codes on this vehicle. And if I could have had someone to actually help me back then, I feel this car would have been perfect. It's like a brand new vehicle. The thing is clean. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice car. It's just this one little electrical issue that needs to be hammered out. And in truth, um, I have a, a slight transmission fluid leak, which I don't think they put um, all of the correct lift bolts where they were supposed to go. And um, also, I'm not sure if they put the seal on there or not. Because, like I said, there shouldn't be a leak at all whatsoever from anything. We took the whole cradle down so you have plenty of room to do everything that needed to be done. I also wanted to put a water pump on, but they rushed the job, so I couldn't couldn't put a water pump on. Now, if I can put a water pump on, this vehicle is a particular headache because the, the engine sits in sideways, and there's literally no room to do anything. If you want to do anything to this vehicle, engine, transmission, um, or related like that, even the power steering pump, water pump, you gotta pretty much take the whole front cradle down that holds the engine, transmission, all those things together. And you have to undo the complete wiring harness to get that, that whole thing down. So that's my other issue. If there is a wiring harness issue, we really could have solved that issue then to make sure everything was plugged in or if there could have been a little more um, a little more thought to it, a little more help, a little more information, then other things could have been taken care of. Other things like the like what I'm doing now as far as the uh, the um, wiring harness, with the little connectors, changing the connectors out or anything like that. Me personally, I would have rather just get another wiring harness back then when I had the money to do so. When the whole cradle was down, we could have snapped all that off and put the brand new one on and been fine right now. They wouldn't be trying to see if one piece of that uh, wiring harness is messed up or not. So it's just that part of it still bothers me. You know, it's um, even if it's not necessarily a favoritism thing, it's just this is important. You know, it's it's you're still dealing with a vehicle. You're putting something on back on the road and I'm 10 hours away. We actually, um, I pulled this here, this uh, Acadia here to Missouri from Ohio when we had to move. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm glad I did. I, I trust it on the road, but it's just a matter of these little bitty issues that need to be taken care of. And I would love to sell this vehicle because we got too many vehicles, but I want to fix this vehicle and sell it. And trying to sell it with codes on it to try to, someone else try to figure it out. You're losing a few thousand dollars on a vehicle. To do that, you know, it's like bar, uh, bay, uh, 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 bargain basement, you know, versus being able to get that true value out of it. I'm never going to see my seven thousand dollars back, but I don't want to sell this thing for two grand or sell it for what my wife owes on it. That's ridiculous. Then we're just losing eight or nine grand. No, I'm losing more than that. Ah, it's just a frustrating thing, and like I said, dealing with the school on that matter when you have um, a department head that's not either not really he doesn't really deserve the position you know I, it, to run a department you have to know how to work with your students you gotta know how to work with your other um the other teachers you gotta know how to work with everybody and it shouldn't be a, a, a kiss butt thing that you, yeah, you got a kiss butt to, in order for everybody else to do work for you. That, or if you're a department head, you're supposed to have knowledge, all the knowledge. I'm supposed to be able to come to you with every problem. And even if you don't know everything, you should be able to help me out with something. I don't, if, if the rest of the instructors know more than the department head, that's a problem. If people you think are your friends don't even want to work with you, that, that's a problem. If someone you brings in to the school um, as one of your instructors under you, when you finally talk to him, this guy don't even like you. <laughs> that's a problem, you know. That, that's oh my god, I don't, I don't, I don't get it.
I don't get it at all. So, you know, it, like I said, the, the school, it's a, it's a decent school, but as a black man, a black person, or even a black woman, you really have to have a lot of a, a, a thick skin. You gotta develop a thick skin quickly because shop talk can get to you if you're not, if you don't have your head on right. And um, know when something is, a, is an attack and when something's not an attack. Know when people, it's just how they talk versus them attacking you in a certain way. Because um, I, like I said, I've heard through my life, I've, I used to work a lot of customer service jobs and um, I've dealt with a, probably at least three or four hundred thousand people in my lifetime when you talk about uh, different jobs even uh, when I was a bouncer for a while um, and you hear a lot of things you get to know um, how people are versus them coming at you crossed um, people know how to how to piss you off you know people do know that they, they work on that but if you just hear someone talking and you know it's not like they say, yeah, that nigger over there, or nothing like that. But um, the word colored, like I said, it, it doesn't really bother me. Although I know it's something that shouldn't necessarily be used. Um, the N word shouldn't be used by anybody. You know, I know we, we uh, as younger black folks, at least uh, I say, when I say younger now, um, younger 40s and younger. The people who came up during tu Tupac's era, um, they still stuck on that never ignorant getting goals accomplished thing. And <sighs> Using the N-word as a term of endearment to me is the same thing as these guys walking down here, walking around with their pants half, half down off their butts because you know what it actually means. But you still use it like it's you know something different. I you know I don't get that one either. But you know it's just something that we need to you know rise up on. You know people tend to use words and use language to get a rise out of you to piss you off to throw you off and throw your plan off. We gotta rise above that point, above that point because people will do that. And they know they'll do that quickly. And because it'll piss you off so fast, and next you know you're the one in handcuffs, or you're the one getting fired, or you're the one getting kicked out of school or class or whatever, when someone else just used words to piss you off. So that's something we need to rise above. But other than that, like I said, Newcastle School of Trades is not a bad school. It's just a matter of you gotta really think about it. Is spending 20 grand worth worth it? You know, is it, is it really worth it? Because you're still going to come into a job on, on entry level, on the bottom floor. You're going to go through this class, you're going to get all this knowledge, and then you're going to be a lube tech, or you're going to be um, changing tires somewhere for a while until something else opens up, or until you can get your ASC certification. And once you get that, then you can go anywhere and you'll know, make top dollar. So it's just, I don't know. It's, it's something you got to really think about to see if it's really worth it. But out there at that school, I did gain some knowledge. And really, the the, the biggest thing about going to those schools is uh, overcoming the fear of breaking something. That, that's kind of like the big thing. Because uh, just like with my, my trucks, taking these hubs apart, these hub bearings off, it's, it's a little bit of an undertaking, depending on the vehicle, too. And uh, just to not have that fear that you're going to break something, tear something up, and then you're thinking about when I put it back together, is it, are the tires really going to hold on, you know, I, you just got to overcome that. And working on those vehicles and doing stuff there, um, it did, it does help that out. Even though I used to, I used to do my brakes on my, I used to have a 65 Skylark and it had uh, old school brakes on it. So I used to do that back in the day, but... I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Was it really worth going to our school? Yeah, I think so. And um, I'm trying to do a little more now as I love to open my shop, open my own shop pretty soon. But I mean, there's more knowledge, more things I need to, to learn. And um, We have the vehicles that we do have. And like I said, we've got a few that are uh, sitting. I got the 99 Expedition that needs an engine. Um, 2000 Sierra that just needs some work done to it. Needs a transaxle. Um, 
this Acadia trying to figure out what the crap is wrong with this thing. Uh, got my Pontiac G8, which needs a, it needs a little work done, so it needs a uh, timing chain. And we hit a deer, so it needs a little front end work done to it. It's uh, not just cosmetic, nothing really serious. And so, you know, we got things that need to be done, you know. Um, so that's giving me the confidence to be able to do those things without really worried about breaking something. So, but and then if I do break it, I would just take it to a shop. It is what it is. So um, I don't know, but just think about that. If you do consider going to a, a, a trade school, just think about those things, especially as a young black man, a young black person. Um, there are some certain things you just kind of got to get over, um, not let them get to you, and then just do what you got to do. You know, do your do your work. Try to learn what you can learn because the knowledge that you gain is more important than someone's language. It's more important than, you know, someone's slip of the tongue. It's more important than, you know, um, even other little idiots that say stupid things. You can handle them you, you, when you need to. But don't let anything get to you to where you are screwing yourself up. So, I don't know. Hopefully, uh, I'll just give you something to think about if you think about going to a trade school. And, uh, other than that, if um, you know anyone who has uh, different parts or anything that you would like to send me, put on a vehicle, um, I can do that. I'm willing to uh, modify my G8, willing to modify my uh, Yukon Denali XL. Uh, really willing to put just about anything on this Acadia. Um, and then that Expedition, that Sierra, you know, lift kit or you know, off-road stuff more than willing to, to do that and I'd love to do videos for it so if you have anything or know anyone who would uh, like to either be a sponsor or anything like that please let me know uh, you can leave it leave me a message and inbox it um, please don't forget to hit the likes hit the uh, subscription button hit the bell whatever is on Instagram YouTube Facebook and um, I'm gonna also put some stuff on Twitter so We'll get this thing going, and Lord willing, I'll find either find out what's really wrong with this Acadia, or someone can give me a grenade. I will find a nice, big drop-off somewhere, throw that grenade in this bad boy, and watch it go boom on the way down. So, we even do a video about that. So, just let me know. Like I said, leave me a message, hit the like, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Deuces, and be safe.